Hello. In this preliminary to focusing video lesson, we're going to learn a number of things to get us ready for the focusing video coming up. We're going to learn how to move and transport the microscope, how to adjust the eyepieces, how to position the slide on the stage, how to adjust the illumination, and how to obtain different magnifications. Now before we get started, I first want to show you how to handle the microscope, how to pick it up when we're ready to carry it. Uh, when they're in the microscope cabinets, the eyepieces will be facing you. And so what we do is we take our dominant hand, we put it under the front, and there's a little indentation there you can put your fingers in. Then we take the other hand and put it behind the microscope where there's another grab hole and then we can lift the microscope and carry it with two hands like that. So always remember to carry the microscope with two hands, one hand under the front, one hand or under the hold all in the back, never by the stage or by the eyepieces. Now, once your microscope is in position, we want to be able to plug it in, but there's a preliminary step we do before we plug it in. First of all, we want to check the light intensity control knob, which we see right here, and make sure that is set on 1, as low as it'll go. If it's not set at 1, then put it back to 1. Now at that point, we can plug the microscope in. So we're going to uh, remove the cord from the back, and then plug that into the nearest outlet. Now at that point, once the scope is plugged in, we can turn the microscope on. And to turn it on, we have an on-off switch right here. So if you depress that, that will turn the light on. And then once the light is turned on, we're going to go back to our light intensity control dial. And we're going to slowly turn that all the way up to 6, as high as it'll go. Once we have the microscope turned on, we're ready to adjust the eyepieces. These are binocular microscopes, which means they have two oculars or eyepieces. Now we have to make sure that we have some lens clicked into place over the light source, so we'll see some light coming through here when we look through the eyepieces. You're going to want your eyes about three quarters of an inch away from the eyepiece. And then it's just a matter of kind of keeping your head steady and adjusting the eyepieces so the distance between the eyepieces matches the distance between your eyes. So with these particular microscopes, both sides or both eyepieces turn, so we can uh, spread them apart by lifting them up, put them closer together by lowering them. And we want to basically put our eyes up where they need to be and start adjusting the pieces till we're seeing one circle of light with two eyes. That does take a little bit of practice initially to get used to it, but it's well worth the effort. It'll be much easier on your eyes if you're using two eyepieces. The next thing we're going to learn is how to put the microscope slide in the slide holder of the mechanical stage. We want to make sure that the slide has the bacteria on the top, that is that the slide's not upside down. When we make slides or when we use prepared slides, there'll be a label on the top side. Then since we're going to be using oil immersion microscopy or a thousand magnification, whenever we're using a thousand magnification, we have to put a nice sized drop of immersion oil where you're going to be viewing the slide. So you let a nice round drop fall like that. Then to place the slide in the slide holder, there's a little knob on the left hand side here. If you pull that back, that opens up an arm. So you can take the slide and slide it right into this little right angle and then release the arm. And in that way, the slide is being held by the two sides of the slide holder. Notice you don't try to put the slide under this like you do spring clips, but rather put it flat on the stage so the slide is being held by the two sides of the slide holder. Now we're going to use the two knobs that control positioning the slide. Notice if you take the top knob, the one on top here, and you turn that, the slide holder in the stage goes forwards and backwards. And when you turn the bottom one, the slide holder goes left and right. So we can use that to kind of center the slide. And if you happen to notice a little bit of stain on the slide, that's often a good area to start. But if the area looks really heavy, it might actually be too thick 
to be able to focus. So that's the basic procedure for putting the slide in the slide holder. Once we have the slide in the slide holder, we have to make sure that we have enough illumination to be able to see the specimen clearly through the microscope. When we look at something magnified a thousand times, it takes a great deal of light to illuminate that object. So there are several controls for the lights. One we've already taken care of when we turn the scope on. That's the light intensity control knob back here, which should now be set all the way up at six and remain in that position. Now what we use primarily to control the amount of light coming through the slide and up into the eyepieces is the iris diaphragm lever. This can be found underneath the stage. This is the iris diaphragm which concentrates the light from the light source and directs it up into the lens of the microscope. So notice there's a lever that will slide left to right and when we're using a thousand magnification or oil immersion microscopy uh, we want to make sure we have that set open enough that we have a pretty good chance we're going to see things. So basically we want to set the iris diaphragm lever to maybe 0.9 which is right there. Uh, that will give us enough light to see a specimen but if it's a lighter specimen there won't be so much light that it washes it out. So that's the main control we use to adjust the amount of light. If we have too much light coming through the lens, we can reduce the light on the iris diaphragm lever. If we need a little bit more, we can turn it to the left and increase the amount of light. But 0.9 is a good starting point. So now we have enough light where we should be able to see the specimen clearly. There is a ring down here. And that's something that's used mostly for lower magnifications. We leave that all the way open. This can close, but if that closes, you won't have enough light for oil immersion microscopy. So that ring should be all the way clockwise or wide open when we're using oil immersion microscopy. And also we want to make sure that the condenser of the microscope is all the way up. As we mentioned, the condenser is right here, and there is a knob that lowers the condenser, so we can use that for changing or cleaning the condenser. But that needs to be up as high as it'll go. Occasionally, someone will be reaching for the focus and grab the condenser knob by mistake and begin lowering it and decreasing the amount of light coming through. So always check just to make sure the condenser is all the way up, and that's where it remains when we're using the microscope. To change magnifications on the microscope, we change the magnification of the objective lenses. In compound microscopes, we have two lenses that work as a set. The ocular lens, or eyepiece, and that magnifies the image ten times. That's pretty much standard with microscopes. But then on a turret down here, we have a number of different objective lenses. Uh, most of the microscopes have a red striped lens. That's a 4X lens, or a 4 magnification lens. Now the product of the, of the two lenses gives us the total magnification. So if we were using the 4X lens, which we won't use because the magnification is too small for this class, it would be 4 of the objective lens times 10 of the eyepiece. We'd be seeing the image 40 times its normal size. Now we will occasionally use the 10x objective and that's one that has a yellow stripe around that. We click that into place. So now the total magnification is 10 of the objective lens times 10 of the eyepiece. We're seeing the image 100 times its real size. If we rotate the blue striped objective into place, that's a 40x objective. And so the total magnification is 40 of the objective times 10 of the eyepiece. We're seeing the image 400 times its real size. That's sometimes called the high dry objective because we don't put it in a drop of oil. And finally, and most frequently in this class, we're going to be using the white striped 100x oil immersion objective. So the total magnification there will be 100 of the objective times 10 of the eyepiece, we're seeing the image 1,000 times its real size. 
Now that lens has to be placed in a drop of oil on the slide. Uh, the reason for that is that at high magnification, we get the bending effect of light going from the glass slide into air, which would happen without oil, and that can bend the image and distort the image so we can't see it very well. It also makes it kind of dark and unable to focus. So by putting a drop of oil on the slide, the lens goes in a drop of oil, which is on the glass, and the oil we use has the same refractive index as glass, which means it behaves as if it was glass. So we have the light going through a glass slide into glass-like oil into a glass lens. We have a homogeneous path, so the light waves don't bend as they go from one medium to another, such as from glass into air. And so therefore the image is not distorted and we can see it clearly and more brightly. So most of the time we'll be using our 100x oil immersion objective, the one with the white stripe, which gives us a final magnification of 1000. And again, it's often called the oil immersion objective because it's placed into a drop of oil directly on the slide.